this summer it was me, Nigel, and Riley Deere, and we were just walking out by the terrace. It was like 8 p.m. at night, and some people stopped him and said, oh, are you Nigel Hayes? You know, can we get a picture? We're having a wedding reception right inside this building. Nigel was like, well, is there cake in there? <laughs> so we go in there, and there's a bride and groom. They're like, man, we're huge basketball fans. And they were like, could you cut this cake with us? So he literally had his hand on the knife while they were cutting the first slice of the cake. They all like fed each other the first bite, <laughs> like three ways. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when it all began. That was the first wedding crash. And then from then, he was just on a mission during the offseason to just go to as many weddings as possible. I've always been able to have fun. Hey, everyone. Uh, Nigel Burgundy here, and I'll be going in there interviewing uh, some of my teammates. When he takes care of everything, so when, you know, we were had the glorious record, et cetera, you know, I could get away with doing whatever I wanted. If I, if I did that, or I don't want to give you too much good luck. When you win, you could do a heck of a lot, and no one says anything. And Western Illinois with a stunner here in Madison. The first two losses of the season or whatever, people say we don't have the, the right, I guess you could say, to, to have fun. Koenig will shoot it, and Koenig, no! Ball's in the air, the clock is out, and Milwaukee! has beaten Wisconsin. We're not necessarily worried about what people are saying, but it's just the, uh, again, the reflection that that would give off if we are if Nigel's out here, you know, making these hilarious videos that he makes on his way to having his own TV show in the midst of this type of season. Nigel better not be doing anything but trying to make sure he's winning. Anytime you change leadership seats, so to speak, that whole voice of reason changes, and he goes from maybe being the comedian, so to speak, to keep everybody loose, to now he's got to lead and command, changing his leadership position. And for the first time since 1941, Wisconsin will play for a national title. With all that we lost from last year, not only the talent, obviously with three guys in the NBA, but also the experience, 21 years of playing experience that walked out the door. So there was not only a transformation of things that had to happen on the court, but there's a complete overhaul of leadership off the court. It kind of took longer than I would have liked. I would have liked to figure out how to be a better leader at the beginning of the season. That's a team that we felt that we should have been able to go in there and get a win and to play as poorly as we did. Something needed to be said, and that's why I kind of had the uh, lashing out in my post-game media. We had a meeting in the locker room that week, and uh, we kind of just all laid it out on the table, and he led the discussion. And the meeting was for kind of like a reshaping of the minds. Like going into the season, a lot of the guys were being told and they could hear in the periphery and over their head that you guys aren't going to be as good as last year. Uh, this is going to be a down year for you guys. Nigel won't be able to handle this. Nigel won't be able to lead his team. And I think that kind of fermented in the guys' minds and it ended up materializing into actually playing like that where guys aren't playing with confidence in themselves. So I did my best to try and weed that out. He's gone from kind of being the jokester that everybody wants at a press conference to having to be the, the voice for the team and to be able to lead people. When we see that look, we know, all right, let's buckle down and get it done. He is our leader, and uh, you know we try to, to work alongside him to help accomplish the common goals. Half inside, muscling his way and scoring, and Wisconsin pulls the upset. Guys are contributing more, doing more things. 3.7 seconds to go in overtime. And Obi gets it in. It's deflected. Kane's got it. And that'll do it. And it's come as a surprise to some people, but to us, this, this is what we expect you to do. This is what we were waiting for. Stolen by half. Lead feed Brown. Down the lane. Thank you and good night. And, you know, it's about time we all showed up. Classical music is what my mindset is like out there. I love classical music. It's my favorite kind of music. If you watch, you know, my demeanor is always just so, you know, steady. 
in a calm like the river on a Sunday afternoon in Kansas. And if you think of playing like that, it could literally look like classical music. It's the Wisconsin Badgers and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Badgers have beaten Iowa the last five times out, but this is a really, really good Iowa team. Gazelle takes the top of the key and goes off to Utah with 10 to shoot. And a thunder is done from Khalil Iverson. Now Gazelle on the drive, left lane line. It's just a jock, left corner three is good. Left side for Vito Brown. Inside key broken up by Jock, taken away by Woodbury. Turnover to Wisconsin. Jock for three, a deep three. Good again. Iowa has the lead. Back to back trays. Iverson baseline left out to Bronson. Open three, right of the circle jump. Back and forth we go. Boy, an entertaining one here tonight. Two-hand slam dunk, Jordan Hill. Wow, what is going on with Iowa? Unforced errors. And Fran McCaffrey is as upset as he's been all night long. The Badgers trying to pick off another big road win here. Nigel Hayes with just three total points. Well, you know the Badgers are going to look to get Hayes going in the second half. Hawks have got to find a way to get Utah going. Clemens on the handoff to Gassell. To the basket, scores off glass. Hawks much more aggressive here to start the half. Gassell gets it out to Utah. His long three. Good! How big was that? Iowa has seized the momentum. The guys matching the biggest lead of the night. This is Wisconsin's third game in six days. You gotta believe at this point of the game, the Hawks should have the fresher legs having been off a week. That guy's keeping a little bit of separation. Hayes for three, right side. Money. Hayes right corner with a shot fake. Now Koenig for three, straight on, tie game. Back to back threes by Wisconsin. Boy, they are methodical. They just keep coming at you. Slam dunk! Oh my goodness! Khalil Iverson just blew it up! Where in the world did this guy come from? Wasn't that long ago, the Hawks led at 51-45, but the Badgers battle back. Now the game's at Wisconsin's pace. Iowa has the ball, needing a score badly. Well, Wisconsin seems to turn the defensive pressure up at will. Jock shoots over a Utah screen, line drives it up there, no good. What a disappointment. What a turnaround. Another stop for the Badgers. The Hawks need a stop in the worst way right here. Joe Walter high on the left. 145 to play, 14 to shoot. Here's Hayes for three, right of the circle, cold-blooded. Nigel Hayes, and the Badgers lead 62-58. Black and gold clad Hawkeye fans leaving the building. Badger fans here are delighted. And the Badgers get another big time road win. This is a crippling blow to Iowa's Big Ten Championship hopes, that's for sure. We haven't played well in the last two games, yet we did a lot of good things in both of these games. We didn't do enough to win. We didn't do enough at crunch time. We didn't do enough when we got a six point, whatever. So we just have to do a better job of that. We can 
and play so much better, guys. You guys know that. But you kept fighting and battling, and as I've told you for two, three months, whatever it's been, as long as you stick together, okay, there's nothing we can't accomplish, okay? As long as you stick together, there's nothing we can't get done. Hell of a job, guys. <laughs>